Well then. I guess there's a new trailer we should watch. What's good, YouTube? Never know you're back again once again. And today, people, today, today, people, today, there's more Pokemon Sun and Moon news and information. I am just now waking up. This trailer came out at 6 a.m. It's now 7.49 a.m. I have my coffee and I'm ready to watch and react and review because so many of you guys have just been bombarding my Twitter account asking me to react and review. So if you guys are hyped for some more Sun and Moon news and information, and of course, if you're a proud member of the Happy Nation, make Make sure you smash the like button down below for us because you already know your support is greatly appreciated now. For right now, we're just going to watch and react to the English, the US version trailer that came out. Uh, I know there is two separate Japanese trailers that came out. I haven't loaded up, but when it comes to YouTube and Nintendo, or not even Nintendo, just Game Freak, they like to claim anything that's from the Japanese trailer. So we might have a little more in-depth, tactical discussion about that. I use that word very finesse like tactical discussion about the stuff that comes out in the Japanese trailer so if there's stuff that is included in there that isn't mentioned in here it's just because we're only watching the US one for right now so let's go ahead and click play on this one right here Pikachu take me away new discoveries in Alola type null normal type ability battle armor this looks like some shit out of Snakewood like you took a Gyarados fin <laughs> and like parts of other Pokemon. Jangmo? That's the pseudo. That no, is that the fossil? No, it's dragon! Bulletproof and soundproof. That's gotta be the pseudo. It has to be the pseudo. I know I've called that on like seven different mods, but this thing it has to be the pseudo. And it looks just like a Dano. Radicate, a Lolan Radicate. We knew about Lolan Radicate because they mentioned that this nigga got fat ass cheeks. Looks like he got a pair of testicles on his face. This nigga got butt cheeks on his face. He eats ass without you. You wanna let me eat your ass? It's fine. Pokemon Sun and Moon are set 12 hours apart? So Pokemon Moon takes place at night while Pokemon Sun takes place. will play out differently. So instead of a gumshoes, you're fighting a Lolan Radicate for the totem Pokemon. Wow, Totem Radicate. That's dope. The Aether Foundation. Lusamine, Aether's glamorous president. Welcome to Aether Paradox, Aether Foundation's whatever the fuck she said. Mothered all these poor Pokemon and showered them with love. Even Pokemon for distance world far from the lower region are worthy of my love. Faba, Branch Chief. Pokemon floats far. Wait. What did he say? Just the name suggests Aether Paradise is a veritable paradise for Pokemon that floats far from out, far out in the sea around Alola. It is an artificial island made entirely by human technology for protecting a Pokemon. So that's the fifth island that we saw in the middle of the region. Wiki? Yo, she can get the dicky. Resistant Branch Chief, we keep Pokemon that have been targeted by Team Skull here. We also try to support Pokemon that need a little extra protection. Aether Foundation employees, Team Skull, get back that Pokemon. Hello. Grunt B. To get rich, make no bones about it. Team Skull's Enforcer Gladion? Look at this Sasuke ass nigga. What the hell? I battle me. I won't take no for an answer. <sighs> My power! You know, you know you can't beat me. You'll just get your Pokemon hurt for no reason. Get this edgy ass nigga out of here. So hold on. I like the fact that there's an actual team. I like the fact that there's an actual team that works again like we actually have a team for good because you know like i can't think of a time when that was a thing in pokemon like what's his face looker worked for the international police association or whatever the fuck it was but like you never actually saw anything from it right am i the only one that, that doesn't remember anything else there's probably something that's blatantly obvious maybe something from the anime search for the alola region for zygarde cells and cores dexio i made up my mind i don't trust this important item to you isn't the nigga from... The item I just gave you is for collecting the cores and cells of Pokemon Zygarde. Aren't those the niggas from X and Y? A strange creature was sucked into the Zygarde cube. Taking photos is a snap with the Poke Finder. Wow, there's little holes. Yo, that's dope. There's little areas where you can go and take pictures of Mons. That's kind of dope. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of dope. This is just, this is literally Pokemon Snap in the game. What? This is literally Pokemon Snap! A mysterious threat, Ultra Beast. Ultra Beast number one. 
That looks like the Lily chick. You know, it's funny. It's funny that this is a thing, like Ultra Beast and whatnot, because like uh, I joked yesterday. I don't know who I was talking to. I was talking to Shady. I joked yesterday saying that what are they going to do in, in 8th gen? Because he was saying that every generation they do something different, something unique. You know, like 6th gen had Megas, 7th gen has Alola forms and Z moves. And I said, 8th gen, they're going to have super evolutions, <laughs> you know? And now they have Ultra Beast. So let's watch the trailer one more time. This thing, Type Null, literally looks like something out of Snakewood. This nigga has the fin of a Gyarados, the hind legs of a Mightyena, the front legs of a goddamn Staraptor, the head of an Arceus, and this nigga is Hannibal Lecter. I am nicknaming him Hannibal Lecter. Look at his fucking face. Look at his fucking face. Or Mankind, because he got the Mick Foley mask on. Bruh. Type Null, normal type battle armor. Is he supposed to be legendary? Because he looks too unique to be something that you just find in the wild. That's actually kind of wild. Jang Mo O. Jang Mo O. Dragon type. He's got to be the pseudo. It's like an Ankylosaurus kind of thing, right? Like that face is that wishy washy. He dragon tailed his ass out of there. I wonder why they they show just Alolan Raticate in this trailer. It's the only Alolan form you see in this trailer, right? Because when they announced Alolan Raticate or Rattata, they said in the description of the Pokemon website that Alolan and Rattata are run by boss Alolan Raticate. So we already knew that was the thing. But this is dope. They're set 12 hours apart. So is the entire game of Pokemon Moon like set at night? While the entire game of Pokemon Sun is set during the day? Oh my god. Say these losing her mind. Hold on. Okay. Back to Sun and Moon hype. I don't even remember what I was saying, but whatever. Said he messed up the flow of the entire thing. Aether Foundation, like I said, I think it's cool that you actually have a team that's fighting for good this time around. Lusamine. I don't know. It just feels... I don't know. The instant skeptic in me is like, no, this, there's got to be something going on. There has to be some way that they're tied into working with Team Skull. What if these are inevitably the bad guys? I don't know. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. But this Velma ad, this is Velma's mother. God damn. At least they fight back, though. Gladion, Team Skull's Enforcer. How is he the Enforcer? You hear the term Enforcer and you think, like, Tiny from Crash. Not this Sasuke-ass nigga. But you know what? He was fighting. He was holding back his power. And don't these two niggas... Isn't Dexil... Aren't these the guys from X and Y that were in the superhero capes? I only said it because of that chick's hair. I don't remember what their names are. I'm pretty sure that one dude's name was Dexio, but I just remember that chick's hair. I don't, I don't know. And they're looking for Zygarde shit, which would make sense since Zygarde's from the Kalos region, so now they're in Alola looking for Zygarde cores. And this is absolutely fucking dope. Absolutely amazing. I love this. They put Pokemon Snap. Everybody wanted Pokemon Snap to get a sequel. They literally put Pokemon Snap in the game. That's wild. It even rates it and everything. Look at that fucking Dragonite! Come on! Ultra Beast. A mysterious threat. Ultra Beast. A mysterious threat, Ultra Beast. This looks like that Lily chick. Is this her secret that she holds in her bag? Is she like an Ultra Beast in disguise? Because they don't give you any any uh, any uh, explanation as to what this is in the trailer. Hmm. Interesting. Lots of interesting things happening, indeed, in this brand new trailer. I don't know. It, it gives me a lot of questions. It gives me a lot of questions. So if you have a lot of questions, where do you go to find the answers? We're gonna go to motherfucking the Pokemon website. A mysterious presence threatens the Alola region, Ultra Beast. In the Alola region, rumors are flying about mysterious creatures known as Ultra Beast. Ultra Beast possess mighty powers and can pose a threat to humans and Pokemon, so they are feared. It appears that the Aether Foundation is also conducting research on these Ultra Beasts. According to rumor, multiple Ultra Beasts exist, each of them called by a code name, UB01. UV-01's body is composed of a glass-like substance, however, it is constantly changing shapes, never settling on one. While evidence of something like a survival instinct can be observed in UV-01, no one knows whether it has a will of its own or any emotions. It's said that for some reason its movements resemble those of a young girl. That's Lily. Hands down, 100%. It, 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 it looked like Lily, it's shaped like Lily. Lily has control of this Ultra Beast or some shit like that. It has to be. 100% has to be. So, are these like the new legendary Pokemon? Like... 
we had mega evolutions but now we have ultra beasts like this is the next step up because they're so rare and they're so powerful like is this this is literally gonna break the game i just want to go back to the time when arceus broke our broke our minds it broke the game we couldn't comprehend and then mega mewtwo came about and you were like oh my god mega mewtwo is the most powerful being and then oh no oh hell no Mega fucking Rayquaza literally descended from the heavens to let us know of his presence. And now we have Ultra Beast. It's like, oh, ah, like what is going to happen next? That's absolutely insane. Looking at the rest of the Pokemon that we saw in today's trailer, we have Type Null, which is known as the synthetic Pokemon, which would make sense since he looks like he's put together a whole bunch of different parts. He's 6'3", 265 pounds of battle armor. This Pokemon wearing a mask has been dabbed Null, meaning nothing. Has been dabbed? I just said dabbed. Has been dubbed Null, meaning nothing. It, the shapes of its front and hind legs are clearly different. The reason is that Type Null was constructed to synthesize the strengths of various Pokemon, enabling it to adapt to any situation. The mask fitted to Type Null's head is a piece of equipment designed to control its latent powers. It's extremely heavy, so it also serves to hinder Type Null's agility. They gotta have a, like a form or something where that mask is broken off and he's he has like his true form. It has to be a legendary Pokemon, just period. The fact that it was it was made specifically, it's like it's like the new Mewtwo. It was made, it was put together, and now it's it's got a mask to harness its power. Cause wasn't that what that armor was? Or was the armor to serve to like protect Mewtwo or some shit like that? To complete a certain mission, there is a need of a Pokemon powerful enough to rival those Pokemon often spoke of in mythology. 100%. That's it's a legendary Pokemon in the region. Type no. It's the Genesect of this of this fucking uh, uh, generation. The Genesect slash Mewtwo. That's wild. That is wild. Battle armor bullshit. Give it adaptability. Give it. It has to be type null, where type non null or whatever, where you have a different form, where his his entire mask is broken off. And you gotta give him adaptability, because if he's made to adapt to any situation, literally enabling it to adapt to any situation, there has to be a type null different form or something that has adaptability, and it's gonna be absolutely unspeakably broken. Unspeakably broken. We had Jangmo O, Jangmo O as well. I thought at first when I saw it, it was gonna be the fossil, because it looks like an Ankylosaurus. I could see like an Ankylosaurus fossil being like rock ground or some shit like that, but it's a scaly Pokemon, it's a dragon. Bulletproof and soundproof. Jang Ma O, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, has the pride of a warrior. Although it remains humble about its capabilities and its pursuit to become stronger, it never neglects its training. Because Jang Ma O uses the scales on its head for both offensive and offense and defense, it never turns its back to its enemies. Many trainers see this behavior and take it as proof that Jang Mo O is a valiant Pokemon. Jang Mo O gathers it in harsh locales like canes where no other Pokemon or people are around to live together as they train. This has to be, has to be the pseudo legendary Pokemon. Unless it evolves once and we only get a stage one Pokemon out of this, it has to be because it's a little baby dragon. It's literally like the Dano of Alola. It literally is the Dano of Alola. I would be shocked if this isn't it. I know I have called that on so many different mons. Some of them just been me bullshitting, but it has to be the fucking Dano uh, of, of this, of the pseudo of this, this, uh, this generation. The Alolan Rattata. Alolan Rattata's form changed the result to its battle for territory with Young Goose. Unlike ordinary Rattata, urban areas are Alolan Rattata's main habitat. Their nocturnal live in, in nests of several dozen Alolan Raticates serve as their bosses. See, that's what I was re referring to earlier. As a countermeasure to the exploding Rattata population in the Alolan region, Young Goose were imported and released. To better avoid Young Goose, Rattata changed their preferred environments and circadian rhythms. These adaptations to their new environment led to a changed form. Alolan Rattata have an excellent capability for sniffing out delicious foods in Alola. They pay no attention to foods that aren't fresh. When it comes to Lola Raticate, his gluttony and I was I can't get over his fucking face, yo. I can't get over his fucking face. Because urban areas are their main habitat, their diet is higher in calories than ordinary Raticate. As a result, they've become hefty. Alolan Raticate prefer to eat only fret oh that said flesh. Fresh fruits and high class ingredients. There are rumors that a certain top notch restaurant takes advantage of Alolan Raticate's taste buds by bringing it along when choosing ingredients to buy and having it taste new dishes. Taste test, taste test new dishes. Alolan Raticate continually stockpile huge amounts of food in their nests. They mostly prefer to send out Alolan Raticate to gather food while they themselves stay home in their nest and just eat. Alolan Raticate is the totem Pokemon of the trial that takes place in the Verdant Cavern on Mele Mele Island in Pokemon Moon. 
It summons Rattata to help it confront those who take on the trial. Gumshoes appears as the totem Pokemon in Burning Cavern in Pokemon Sun. That is dope. Because we already know all the totem Pokemon in the game. We know it's a Gumshoes. We know it is a Formantis. I think that's what it is. Because it was Lore Mantis or some shit was its evolution. And then, or maybe it's the other way around. Whatever that, that Mantis looking Pokemon, the, the Lee Banny looking Pokemon is, we know that's a, a totem Pokemon. Uh, Wishy Washy, we know that's a totem Pokemon. And there was a fourth one, I don't remember what it was. There's a fourth one, I don't remember what it was. But if, what if in Pokemon Moon, you know, it's, uh, it's reversed? You know, you have Alolan forms in that game versus new Pokemon in another game. What if it's like, uh, just reverse like the first one you get uh, Gumshoes in Pokemon Sun and a lone Pokemon in Pokemon Moon then the second one in Pokemon Sun you get a lone Pokemon and then you get uh, Four Mantis or whatever it's Mon is because it said that Mon is more active at night It stays asleep during the day So I could see some shit like that happening where they just alternate back and forth or just keep one exclusive to the other But still that's absolutely dope. This is a boss ass nigga move over hunch curl Lonely Raticate is here to run the fucking show god damn it that's wild. If we speak about the Aether Foundation, Aether Foundation works in the Alola region. Their foundation goal is to care for Pokemon that have been hurt. See, to me, just the natural skeptic in me says that's bullshit. Bullshit! The Aether Foundation has constructed an artificial island called Aether Paradise. There they not only provide shelter for Pokemon, but also conduct various research projects. It seems that the main character will also be able to visit Aether Paradise during the adventure. Lusamine is the lovely founder uh, the lovely Lusamine functions as the Aether Foundation's president. Okay. Faba, the Aether Foundation's branch chief, sports green sunglasses. They're a signature accessory. He seems very proud of his, of his position as branch chief. See, that nigga just looks suspicious. He looks suspicious. Wick, or Wiki, is the assistant branch chief of Aether Paradise, has a caring personality, so she's loved by all the Aether Foundation employees. That's Mama Aether right there. Employees of the Aether Foundation. The employees of the Aether Foundation shelter and care for Pokemon. Their uniforms appear to depend on which division they belong to. But you know what they are not missing out on? They are not missing out on storage. These niggas got sacks on bags, on pockets, on top of pockets. Anything you need, they got. Breath mint, taken care of. Stick of gum, taken care of. You need a wet nap, they got it. Pokeballs, they got that too. And they can store whatever the fuck they want in their fucking cuffs on their ankles. God damn, these niggas are prepared. And apparently a pair of trainers is investigating Zygarde. Dexio and Cena will show up as you progress through your adventure. These two appeared in Pokemon X and Pokemon Y as the professor's assistant. I knew I recognized that bitch's hair from somewhere. They'll give you an item called Zygarde Cube and ask you to collect Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells during your adventure in the Alola region. Cores and cells can be found all over Alola. Collect Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. Objects giving off light can be found in various locations around the Alola region. These are Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. You can collect them in the Zygarde cube you receive from Dexio and Cena. If you collect lots of cores and cells, the path to finding Zygarde in Pokemon Sun and Moon may become clear. That's wild! All the speculation this entire time that Kalos has something to do with Alola has pretty much been confirmed. This entire time we've been saying, what if Zygarde came from Alola, I mean, came from Kalos or some shit like that. There has to be some sort of connection. Now, whether or not this means that you're actually going to get to go back to Kalos in the game is a whole other story all to begin with because Z uh, Zygarde is found naturally in Kalos. So what if this is one of those things where it's like, uh, like you remember the Sinjo ruins, how Cynthia took you there in 4th gen? What if you collect all these cells and all this stuff and then you go and see them and they take you back to Kalos? And they introduce you, they take you to Terminus Cave, and you get the chance to go through Terminus Cave and encounter Zygarde. But this time, you have all the cores and all the cells, so you capture Zygarde, and you expose them to the cores and cells, and that's how you get perfect form, 100% Zygarde. That would be wild. That would be wild. But I knew, I knew when I saw them, that I recognized them from somewhere. Just, the, it, it wasn't even her hair, it was the name Dexio that got to me first, because it's like, what? That sounds so familiar. Just the name Ze Dexio. I almost said Zexio. Dexio. The creature that just got sucked into the cube is what we call a Zygarde cell. That's wild. Zygarde. That's wild. I love Zygarde. That Pokemon is too fucking dope. Then last but not least, we have the Ruffians of Team Skull. In the Alola region, a group of Ruffians known as Team Skull cause a lot of trouble. They steal their people's Pokemon, mess up trial sites, and delight in all kinds of evil deeds. So it's like a rehashed Team Rocket. They don't have an overarching goal. It's just they're here to fuck shit up. 
Gladion. This young man lends his strength to Team Skull as an enforcer. He places a high value on being strong in Pokemon battles. His partner Pokemon is a serious type null. What? So this nigga gets a fucking legendary, like, off the bat. He gets a broken ass Pokemon from day one. That's bullshit. I want a motherfucking broken ass Pokemon. You know what? I don't give a shit. Bring him on. Bring his ass on, because me and my motherfucking Poplio will gladly pin you to the ground and forcibly shit down your throat, Gladion. I see you on your silver grind. I understand that. I get that. It's kind of dope. He's on his Paul grind, his Gary Oak grind. Cool, dope, whatever. And it just, they just go over the other Team Skull members. But still, Gladion, that nigga is Sasuke as fuck. He don't even have the one eye. Just, my name is Wraith. Oh my god. My name is Wraith. And then he like mega evolves and he has two over his eyes. And he's like, I don't need to see the world. The world that has forsaken me. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's dope. We had a ton of new Sun and Moon information. And keep in mind, this is the longest reaction video that I've ever done to a trailer before. We still have yet to even look at the Japanese trailers. I gotta go to the gym. And then I can come back and look at the Japanese trailers and whatnot. And I'm sure myself and a few other friends will have discussion videos on the different topics that have been announced. Like Ultra Beasts and, and fucking... Uh, uh, Aether Foundation and all this shit. So just keep an eye out on the channel later today. Subscribe if you have it so you don't miss out on any Sun and Moon information. And of course, if you guys enjoyed and you're hyped for Sun and Moon, make sure you smash the like button down below for us. So if you're a prime member of the Nappy Nation, make sure you smash the like button down below for us. But with that, I'm gonna get about. Thank y'all once again for your support and thank you for checking the video. We out this bitch. Bye!